Hi students, coming to next topic that is a C++ class declaration. So in the previous videos, I already given a structure of the classes, how we, we are going to use the class while you are writing the programs. So now let us see the uh, clear view of how we declare the class. What are the terms that we used for declaring the class? So actually class is a user defined structure. So we said it is a user defined. You are defining a name. You are giving a name to a particular class. So it is a logical method to organize data and func uh, functions in same structure. So it, in the same structure, you are just uh, organizing. First of all, it is a logical method. So logical method means the class doesn't occupy any space in the memory. Only the objects will occupy the memory. Uh, so the class is a logical method to organize data and functions in the same structure. In the same structure. So that is a class. Now coming to a class definition has two parts. So this whatever the class definition is there that's having the two parts. One is class header and another is class body. So class head means here a keyword class followed by a class name you call it as a class head. A keyword class followed by a class name okay so that is a class head so example means if you are taking a uh, class is a keyword followed by a name suppose puja okay so here this is a class and the class name now coming to the class body class body is again divided into Three. Okay, so here the class definition consisting of class head and the class body. Class head is nothing but uh, a class name followed by cl a class keyword followed by a class name. Whereas class body consisting of collection of data members. Collection of data members means collection of variables. You can call it as data variables, just variables. Collection of member functions. So collection of member functions, it's nothing but, so this is nothing but variables. And this is nothing but methods. So a class body consists of collection of data members collection of member functions and levels of access control. This is the one more thing that is present in the class body. Levels of access control, nothing but access specifiers. Those are the public, private and the protected. Okay. So this is a class. A class is defined so it is a logical method to organize data and functions on the same structure. This class definition can be divided into two types. One is class head and another is the class body. Class head consists of the keyword class followed with a name, class name. And the class body is having the variables, methods and the access specifiers. I think you will be clear now. So what is the class construct? Let us see the syntax. So the syntax for this is so here the class just write any class name within the class you are having the access specifiers so the access specifiers for the data members data members Okay, so and then after data members, 
uh, you can write the member functions member functions okay so within the member functions you write the code of that and this semicolon so this should be uh, compulsory because the class will end with a semicolon closing braces with semicolon okay so here this class is nothing but it is a keyword a class is a keyword and this class name you call it is a user defined name you can write whatever the name you want user defined name And this coming to this uh, access specifier. So, this may be a private, public, protected. A private, public, protected. And coming to this data member. So, nothing but the variables to be used. The variables that are used. So, this is the data members. Now, coming to the member functions. So, the member functions is nothing but the methods methods to access this particular data access the data members is it clear so the class consists of access specifiers so means the data that will be giving the protection to the data so access specifiers and the variables that we used and the member functions is nothing but our operations that we have to perform in on this particular data. Okay. And end with the semicolon. Now let us see one by one. So what is this access specifiers? Okay. And what are these member functions? And what are these data members? Okay. So coming to next. Accessing data members so if you want to access the data members you need to specify you need to specify the access specifiers so that access specifiers or maybe a private public protected suppose if your data access specifier is a private means it presents within a class so first you have to be noted this private will present within a class so that is one point next only members of the same class can have accessibility only members of same class have accessibility so this point you have to note it a private means it should be within a class and next is only members of the same class can have the accessibility so it is inaccessible from outside the class so inaccessible from outside the class I think you get it so private it is a secured secured means within a class we are declaring the variables as a private so those variables we will declare as a private that can access only within the same class these are not supposed to access from outside the class means another classes cannot supposed to access those variables now coming to the public so what does this public so public means anyone can access so accessible from outside the class so outside the class also you can access those data members so only how you can access those variables outside the another class only you have to mention only through only through class objects so this you have to be noted you can access those variables that declared as a public 
from outside the class also only with the help of the class objects only through class object you can access those variables now coming to the protected so what is protected a protected is present in between private and public means we are maintaining the data private as well as the public access how it possible let us see if a function defined so whatever the function defined in a class is protected let us think whatever the function that we declared in the class is mentioned as a protected then they cannot be accessed they cannot be accessed from outside the class so whatever the function that we defined inside the class is suppose it is protected means they cannot be accessed from outside the class means it is maintaining privacy okay it is maintaining the privacy but but one thing is but it can be accessed from the derived class okay so the way the function that is protected that can be accessed from the derived class so the derived class is a uh, connectivity to the uh, whatever the class that is uh, where the function is declared as a protected okay the, here it is acting as a public so i think uh, you get it uh, suppose if a function whatever the function that we declared inside the class is protected this can be accessed from uh, this cannot be accessed from outside the class so outside another class you are not supposed to access but you can access from the derived class so from the derived class you can access those variables if that function is set with a protected okay so these are the accessing data members so that may be the private public and protected okay so actually normally according to the rules of data abstraction or uh, information hiding the one thing you have to be noted is so normally in accordance to the rules of data abstraction and information hiding so the points that you have to be noted or the data members so whatever the data members that we are using inside the class the data members are kept private so you have to maintain the data members as kept private because whatever the variables that you are using that should not be visible to the outside the classes okay so that should be maintained private and whereas methods methods are kept public okay so the data members are kept always kept as a private and methods are kept as a public because if you declare the methods as a public those method structures can be useful for uh, different uh, identities so different persons will be there all the people will access those uh, methods but with the different data values so the data value should be the data member should be kept as a private because for each person there are different data members will be there whereas the method is same for all the people so you just make it as method you have to keep it as a public whereas data members will always kept as a private then your uh, data will be safe you can save data you can save data from misuse okay so with the help of this you can save the data from misuse so always keep the data members as a private and methods are the 
public so if you keep the methods as a public so anyone can access that method but with different values so this can be maintained this is one of the rule that data abstraction and information hiding will follow while you're creating the programs so next uh, in the next video we will see what are the member functions that are present in the classes so we had seen how the class will be declared so after the class declaration i explained uh, within the class we are having the data members access specifiers and the member functions so we had seen the access specifiers and the mem data members now in the next video i'll explain what are the uh, member functions thank you